Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? So today we're gonna to go over my settings that I use in Warzone for the best FPS and the best image quality. So my exact settings are not the absolute best for FPS because I do want my game to look good and to be visible so I can see other players and whatnot. But this is gonna be the best settings for optimizing the two of those. So here we go in graphics, full screen borderless is what I recommend. Uh, full screen in theory, I guess gives a little bit more FPS, but if you have multiple monitors, Full screen borderless is much, much easier and basically has no difference on FPS. Uh, display monitor, whichever one your main gaming monitor is, obviously adapter is going to be your GPU. Um, refresh rate is all going to depend on what your uh, monitor's refresh rate is. Luckily, I have a 240 hertz. If you're on a 144 or a 60 or a 75, put that to whatever that is. Uh, render resolution, I recommend going with 100. If you're on an old crappy PC, you could turn this down a little bit, maybe to about 75, 80, 90. Um, it's going to make the game look not as good. It's going to look more slightly pixelated, but it will help your FPS a lot if you lower that. Uh, aspect ratio, we're going to keep that on automatic. VSync turn off unless you have a good computer and a crappy monitor. So if you only have a 60 hertz monitor and your game is able to push easily past that, you may want to consider turning this on if your monitor is not G-Sync or FreeSync. Uh, custom frame rate limit. Um, so I do uh, gameplay 300. Um, really, you can just set this to 240 or whatever your uh, monitor's max refresh rate is. Uh, for the menu and out of focus, I keep it at 60. There's no really point having it uh, higher. Basically, that means if you're not in game, uh, it's going to lower your FPS and uh, ease that load on your GPU. Uh, NVIDIA highlights, I would recommend turning off because it does uh, take some use out of your CPU and GPU. Um, so that will, in theory, hurt your frames a little bit. Uh, the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, I definitely recommend keeping uh, enabled with boost. It should not affect your FPS whatsoever. Uh, if anything, it's just going to reduce that latency and have uh, quicker reactions to the game. Um, display gamma, if you're on a monitor, you should be on 2.2. If for some reason you're on a TV uh, on PC, I don't know why you would be doing that, you would be on this BT. So if you're a console player, you're probably going to be on that. Computer, uh, you're going to be on 2.2. Texture resolution. Uh, this depends a lot on your graphics card. So if you have a uh, not as good graphics card, you might have to keep this on low. Um, but the difference from very low to normal is only about two to three FPS from what I've noticed. And the game looks a lot better on normal. Um, I wouldn't really recommend going high as I don't think there's much of a difference. Um, and there is a little bit more of an FPS drop there. Um, so I recommend going normal unless your VRAM usage uh, is too much on normal, then back it down to low, or if you really have to, you could go very low, but the game looks very poor then. Texture, filter, uh, and, and anisotropic, I don't know how to say that word. Uh, I keep this on high. This has, from what I tested, it had pretty much no effect on FPS, and it makes things look better, so why not? Particle quality, this is an interesting one. So looking up some YouTube videos and also uh, testing this myself after I found this on YouTube, uh, if you play this on low, which you would think would be better for your FPS, um, when you're looking at a distance at things, it actually makes things kind of shimmer and look bad um, and can drop your FPS a little bit. Um, so, but when you're at high, the only time this negatively affects your FPS is when you are looking right into like a fire. Um, I would assume this would happen also for explosions, possibly. This can drop your FPS maybe 5 to 10 from what I've noticed and what I've seen on YouTube as well. But if, as long as you're not looking into like an explosion or something, the game looks way better with this on high, and it's actually better FPS on high. So I recommend keeping that on high. Bullet impacts and sprays let you see where uh, bullets hit. It does not affect your FPS, so I would keep that enabled. Tessellation is another one that really does not affect FPS and makes the game up close look a little bit better, so I keep that to all. Um, On-demand texture streaming. For the absolute best FPS, you would want to enable this and then put streaming quality to low. However, the difference from 
uh, low to normal in terms of FPS is extremely minimal and the game looks a lot better if you keep streaming quality to normal. So I would recommend keeping it to enabled in normal. Um, when we get down to shadow and lighting, you definitely want to keep shadow map shadow map resolution to low. Putting this on normal or high does negatively affect your FPS. There's my cat. Hello, buddy. What are you doing? He's going to go see Baby Yoda. Anyway, as we continue, uh, cache bot shadows and cache sun shadows. You definitely want to keep this to enabled. These actually help your FPS to keep these enabled. Particle lighting uh, didn't really find much of a difference. And also my research on YouTube, I couldn't really find a good answer on this. Um, basically what I gathered was you're better safe to keep it on low as there's not much of a difference in terms of quality. Hi buddy. Um, so I would recommend keeping that low. If you have a newer GPU, you have the uh, option of doing direct X ray tracing. Um, in terms of FPS, you absolutely want to keep this disabled. Um, enabling it will look make the game look cooler, but it will take a big hit on FPS. Ambient occlusion, you do want to leave off. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the NVIDIA control panel for my NVIDIA users out here. Uh, but you do wanna keep this off in game. Screen space reflection, you also wanna keep this off, um, especially if your ambient occlusion is off. Uh, excuse me, sir, you're blocking my view. Um, and basically everything in post-processing effects, you wanna keep that off or disabled. Or zero. So those are my in-game graphics settings. Now when we talk about the NVIDIA control panel, for those of you that don't know how to do this, if you have a PC with a NVIDIA card, simply right click anywhere on your uh, blank display, go to NVIDIA control panel, we'll let it load up. Uh, the most important tab here is going to be the manage 3D settings tab. So when we go to global setting, this will uh, apply to all games. Now, sometimes certain games you want to change individually in program settings. So by doing this, you can search that individual game. So I have Call of Duty selected here and I could change something per game. Um, but this is what I use for Call of Duty. Uh, for image sharpening, turn that off. Ambient occlusion, off. Uh, and anisotropic filtering. You actually want to turn this to 16 times. This will not hurt your FPS and it will smooth edges a lot. Um, the next two anti-aliasing modes, you want to turn those off. Anti-aliasing mode, keep that the application controlled. So that'll let the uh, game you are using uh, do it. But where you have that off in game, uh, transparency off, background application max frame rate off. CUDA GPUs, make sure that is on all. If you have a relatively decent PC, um, I would recommend turning your DSR factors to four times the native solution. Basically what that does is if you have a resolution that is higher than your monitor can handle, your computer will attempt to scale that up for a better quality. Um, and then with that, I would turn your DSR smoothness to about 33%. From the research I've done on YouTube, this is the best settings. Um, I've not played with this too much, but once I did turn this on, I did think the game looked a little bit better and I did not notice any difference in my FPS. Low latency mode is an interesting setting. For Call of Duty Warzone, I would absolutely recommend turning this to ultra as it does not hurt your FPS whatsoever. However, there are a lot of games that turning this to on or ultra will uh, actually make your game stutter and make it perform very Poorly. So this is kind of a game by game situation. Max frame rate, just keep that off. Uh, and then let's see, monitor technology. Um, if you have a G-Sync monitor, you can turn that on. I do luckily. MFAA uh, Warzone does not support this. So go ahead and leave that on off. The OpenGL rendering GPU, just keep that on auto. Unless you have two GPUs, then select that to the more powerful GPU. But if you have two GPUs, why are you watching this video? I'm kidding. Uh, power management mode. Uh, this is an interesting, interesting one from the research I have done. Prefer maximum performance, I think is the better option. Now you can just do normal. Basically what this does is prefer maximum performance will keep your GPU clocks, uh, basically as high as they can go all the time. Um, so in theory normal will, uh, if you're in a, a a screen that does not require a lot of your GPU, it will back those clocks down. Now the concern is, let's say you're going from a screen that is uh, doesn't require a lot of GPU to all of a sudden requiring a lock. There might be some time where it takes to boost those clock speeds up. 
Now, I would think this is a very small amount of time, but from uh, my limited research I've done on the internet, which has mostly been YouTube and Reddit, uh, people said at times you can have some small performance differences if it is not on maximum performance. But if you have an older PC or if you're concerned about power, would definitely keep that on normal. I don't think this is a major setting that's going to have major FPS differences, but if you want the absolute best, I would go for maximum power performance. Um, preferred refresh rate, highest available, shadow cache, definitely want to keep that on. For these texture filtering ones, it gets a little interesting. So you for this texture filtering quality, there's quality, high quality, performance, and high performance. For my research that I found on the YouTubes, uh, high quality and high performance were actually worse than both quality and performance. High perf or I'm sorry, performance will get you slightly better FPS than quality. However, quality has significantly better quality with very minimal FPS difference. So I would recommend going for quality. And then with that, you're going to keep your texture filtering, anisotropic sample optimization off. Keep negative LOD bias to clamp. Try a linear opt optimization on. Um, and then from there, we're going to go threaded optimization with auto, triple buffering off, vsync, keep that to the 3D application setting. I honestly have no idea what these last two settings do and really didn't find much information on these. So this is this, the default uh, values, which I left to one and off. So that is our NVIDIA control panel. All right. So now that we've covered all of our graphic settings, I do want to touch briefly on some other settings. So. In audio, I have found that boost high audio mix works the best for me. Some of the other common ones uh, that people do say work well for hearing footsteps are boost low and home theater. Personally, I've been on boost high for a very long time and trying to get used to the other two have been a big issue for me. Um, I'm simply used to boost high and I know what the footsteps sound like and generally where they are. So I've kept it to that. Um, I do have my master volume turned down a little bit. Music volume I keep off dialogue and effects I've turned down a little bit. Um, there's no exact science to this. This is kind of a preference, but this is what I do and uh, I've been happy with it. Uh, I do, you can, I have juggernaut music off, although it doesn't really matter. Hit marker sounds, I just like the sound of classic a little bit better. It's not much of a difference. Um, let's see, I would recommend keeping your open mic threshold just slightly above zero so that it's not picking up static or anything in your mic. If you have a very poor mic, maybe turn this up a little bit higher. Uh, voice chat effect definitely go with no effect. I disable the war tracks because it's going to be really annoying. And uh, since I have it disabled, it really shouldn't matter. But we're going to turn that down a little bit more anyway. I'm not sure if that plays or not when you're the driver versus passenger. And then when we go over to the general tab here real quick, I do play with a max field of view of 120. Now, the higher that goes, the more uh, pull on your GPU this will have. So in theory, if you wanted the absolute best FPS, turning this down to about 90 from what I hear on the YouTubes is the best for FPS. However, uh, in terms of visual uh, and just seeing stuff more, I recommend it on 120. A lot of people do like to back it up a little bit, 110, 115, that's fine with whatever your preference is. Um, other big important things would be minimap shape square as you have you see a lot more if you look in the picture uh the, these corners are missing in the circle but are visible here i keep my minimap rotation enabled and i do keep my letters on letters just show you your uh north south west east directions um this is just personal preference on what telemetry things you want to show. I do keep an FPS enabled, uh, latency, GPU, temp, and packet loss. I keep the other things off as they don't seem that important to me. Now I'm not going to go through all my keyboard and mouse uh, keybinds as I do have a complete separate video on that. If you're interested, uh, you're more than welcome to go look that on my channel. Um, so we won't spend that here um, as that will just take a lot of times. But some general settings I would recommend. Make sure your mouse acceleration, mouse filtering, and mouse smoothing are all zero or disabled. If you have any of these on, they can cause kind of some issues with the accuracy of uh, you're aiming and it can be different from time to time. So definitely recommend keeping those off. And that is pretty much all my Warzone settings. Hopefully I got everything. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can, or feel free to drop in on my Twitch, uh, www.twitch.tv slash T Captain X. I'm more than happy to answer some of those questions in chat and everyone have a great day.